जय हिंद एंड वेलकम टू डेव टॉक्स दिस इज द जनरल स्टॉक फीचरिंग लेफ्टिनेंट जनरल रवि शंकर एंड लेफ्टिनेंट जनरल सतीश दुआ लेफ्टिनेंट जनरल रवि शंकर पी वी एस एम ए वी एस एम बी एस एम और रिटायर्ड डायरेक्टर जनरल ऑफ दी आर्ट लरी ही हैज डीप नॉलेज एंड अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ स्ट्रेटेजिक अफेयर्स नाउ अ प्रोफेसर इन द एरो स्पेस डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ दी आई आई टी मद्रास अ स्पीकर एंड एन ऑथर लेफ्टिनेंट जनरल सतीश दुआ पी वी एस एम यू आई एस एम एस एम बी एस एम has served as the chief of integrated defense staff to the chairman of the chiefs of staff committee a former co commander 15 co today a speaker and an author of a book india's brave hearts jan shankar jan dua welcome to the general stock today as we all know we're going to be talking about afghanistan just a brief note before we start taliban has reached kabul ashraf ghani has fled amarullah saleh is sitting in panjshir trying to raise up the northern alliance how far they'll be successful only time will tell the taliban are holding press conferences giving the world promises of the world but on the other hand brutalities are on the rise the kabul airport is in chaos evacuations are on the on its way loads of questions arise how did taliban do this what exactly happened to the ana what exactly happened to the us well to this all i would want to say is let the dust settle and i'm sure all the answers will come out in due course the purpose of this discussion is to basically see what is the situation on the ground one two how are the players the different players on the card table how have they reacted and what are they going to do in the future and the third of course how is this going to affect india i request both the generals to give us their opinion of the ground situation in kabul what is happening what do they see uh, as the current scenario to start with jan dua sir may i request you to begin with your comments please uh thank you adi today there are uh, you know the world uh, is agog with the uh, talk about afghanistan what's happening in afghanistan what can happen in afghanistan some countries more than others countries that are involved countries that are in the periphery or countries that are involved for some reason or the other india is one of those countries so um it is bound to happen that uh there is a lot of talk on different aspects of afghanistan so as we all know and you brought out um, adi taliban is i would not use the word back in power once again but then it is today in control it has swept back uh, wh- what will be the power sharing arrangement remains to be seen uh, but before that i am not going into the details of you know why the, uh, the us pulled out in a hurry and uh, how they rolled up in 3 days so we've been through all that and i'm 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 going to talk about the fact as to what is happening now uh, what is different this time which also everyone knows but just to Uh, put our discussion and put everyone on the same page uh, is that the taliban is putting out the right statements it is putting out the right statements both uh, on the domestic front as well as how it is uh, dealing with the uh, other countries or the international community it is uh, it has said that it forgives uh, all others there is going to be no witch hunt women can work Uh, within the limits of the uh, uh, sharia laws uh, there there seems to be no blood shed on the streets uh, life uh, on the streets is far better than life in at the kabul airport for different reasons kabul airport obviously people are trying to get out so that is is uh, not yet under control the us forces uh, are maintaining a uh, control at the kabul airport what is interesting is to be seen uh, what remains to be seen as to how power sharing arrangement is done for that you also just brought out adi there are different factions at play uh, they have announced that they will have a, a, a inclusive government all all will participate how they will uh, participate remains to be seen so uh, a resistance is on the panch series are getting together some big names are in the play amit karzai is talking to them iran wants ismail um, can to uh, get a get a role so all that remains to be seen however as as far as the 
diplomatic community is concerned uh, so far the their uh, the reactions from other countries firstly everyone is on a wait and watch uh, policy but their assets have been frozen so uh, upwards of 9 billion assets in the f- foreign uh, banks have been frozen without money it is very difficult to run a government it is one thing to be uh, a rebel organization protesting against the government against the uh, other forces but is, it is another to run the government they have to pay the salary bills how are they going to get people back to work uh, they have to run a country there have to be uh, there have to be goods in the shops uh, they, it's a landlocked country how will that get managed otherwise things can get out of control and that remains to be seen the only other point that i would like to uh, talk about and then we will take it up later is what is more important for india is the role pakistan plays today the role china plays is also getting increasingly important but pakistan this taliban or the baby of pakistan the isi in a different circumstance and we all know what happened three decades ago but uh, pakistan has been so linked uh, inextricably uh, meshed with taliban at different levels does it really control it fully now what are their linkages right now the, does how does the isi treat pakistan isi now i beg your pardon how does the taliban treat the isi of pakistan now since all that impacts on india that is something that we need to uh, concerns ourselves with a little more than other aspects i'll leave it there for now and we will take it as the discussion comes uh, general shankar sir yeah i think uh... then dua has put across most of the issues uh, like he said the dust and what you also said adi the dust is not settled down at all right everything is a moving part and it's an emerging and evolving situation but i'd like to highlight a couple of issues uh, about afghanistan in the current situation whatever is coming out in the news and whatever is coming out in media is largely speculative it is presumptive because it there's a difference between what is happening on ground and what has been generally spoken on expected and it is largely emotive right it is not balanced one number two the afghanistan situation is pretty complex uh, let me highlight one thing about their character it is said that in afghanistan a brother fights with a brother but when the brother and the brother both the brothers are confronted with the cousin it is a brother plus brother versus the cousin when there's an outsider who comes in it is the brother plus the brother plus the cousin versus the outsider when the outsider is finished it's back to brother plus brother versus the cousin when the cousin is finished it is back to brother plus brother and one of them has to go so this is how afghanistan is a shifting mosaic of tribes with greater tribal loyalties than anything else and greater you know kind of uh, ethnicities tajiks uzbeks some chechens but uh, pashtuns right hazaras a whole lot so it's a shifting mosaic and taliban itself is not a monolith right there's a quetta shura there's a miransa shura there's a shura based in iran and there's a uh, yeah and peshawar shura they are all it's not a monolith there's a divide between the top leadership uh, i won't say divide there's a fault line between the top leadership which is now used to luxury and the ground soldiers who are now hardened and you know so there are various issues and then of course like what you said there's no money okay so it's a evolving situation but having said this as the situation is evolving what we need to focus and understand is what are the players around and what are their interests and how will they take afghanistan forward and what are they looking out for right i think we could uh, start on those lines thank you both for uh, i think putting a very good base to the discussion as general dua mentioned there's a lot of confusion uh, in the whole situation and general uh, shankar also said that confusion tied up with a lot of tribal loyalties and traditions i mean brother versus brother versus cousin versus outsider um that's a very good example to give and that's something that we can see in the whole pashtun uh, 
you know laws of their their tribes and stuff like that uh general duas uh, you know one of the biggest players in this whole game is obviously the usa and uh, the second biggest i would say at the moment is pakistan um you one can't mention the entire afghan situation without talking about usa and pakistan may i request you to dwell upon what their reactions have been and how do you see this whole situation opening out with the us as well as pakistan um you are right they are the main players uh, it is the us pull out that has started uh, this dynamic that we are seeing in the last few weeks uh, but let us also remember as far as us is concerned much as their involvement has been deep and total during the last uh, two decades the fact remains that when we all glibly everyone says the us is pulling out the us is not pulling out us has not pulled out it's only the uh, us military that is pulling out they have uh, uh, pledged to keep their engagement they have uh, pledged to uh, continue to participate in the reconstruction uh, and uh, the development of afghanistan in several aspects in several fields so that remains to be seen and that that will continue true some diplomats may leave or reduce during the time of this um, uh, upheaval or till the dust settles as we talking about but that does not take away anything from the fact that us is pledged to remain involved in afghanistan only not militarily that's that's one difference so it remains to you know i am i am tempted to uh, also give you an aside just like general shankar explained it very well about the brothers and cousins there is a joke that is going around in some circles which says that uh, exactly two decades ago the taliban leased afghanistan to the us so for 20 years they have constructed infrastructure growth development brought up the cities well even india incidentally has uh, has uh, a dam and couple of other the parliament building and so india has also participated and so, so have others and after 20 years they've they've you know the lease is over and they've they've taken back <laughs> they've they've uh, inherited an afghanistan which is which has some more um, infrastructure growth but that, that's that's just an aside it but it does it does say something about what is happening um coming to pakistan as i briefly mentioned earlier pakistan uh, started what is today taliban when it was uh, with with a lot of aid and help from the us it was to suit a certain need at that time in uh, uh, during the russian um, invasion thereafter there has been a a very complex uh, dynamic between pakistan and uh, that is the isi of pakistan and uh, the taliban but apart from that that is something that everyone is aware of and we have spoken enough of it the issue between pakistan and uh, uh, afghanistan is also its contiguity its borders it is also the ethnicity on both sides of the border the the uh, while their groups the uh, the afghan rebels have bases in pakistan they, the those rebelling against the pakistan government have their bases on the other side of the durand line so it's a complex dynamic there are different terror groups whether it is uh, ttb this side or the common cause of pashtuns on both sides that is becoming a big worry for pakistan because if pashtuns uh, th- there is a, a you know a sub regional or a sub ethnic uh, uh, aspiration that is that is growing over there uh, then the the other aspect uh, which is most important for us is taliban really now under control or does it listen to isi well the taliban wants to be free totally but like i said earlier there is a question of money but is is pakistan going to be in a position to be able to continue to uh, give them uh, aid resources materials if uh, the us does not supply it why would us want to supply it so all that remains to be seen and uh, this is this is again in this field also we need to wait and watch and then the last question which i will not discuss now but i will just leave this uh, uh, close my remarks to say like last time round when uh, does it pose 
an enhanced security threat to Kashmir now as it come to us, comes to us. Earlier, those who were trained in Afghanistan, the Afghan Mujahids, uh, the Mujahids that got freed up from there, Pakistan redirected that focus, that attention towards Kashmir uh, with some success. And we were left uh, in the army, we were left battling with that. So this time round, does that threat get enhanced? We'll talk about that later. Thank you, Adi. Dhan Shankar, sir, would you, know, you like I, to add something yeah. to this? See, I mean, let's see this thing. What is Pakistan's interest? Fundamental interest in, is that uh, Pakistan wants a government which it can control, at least partially, and keep India out of the game. Mm. Right? That's the fundamental interest of Pakistan. And the second interest of Pakistan is, can Pakistan form a grouping with China, Russia, and Iran and then control Afghanistan. It wants Afghanistan as a client state, right? It always. That's the fundamental thing of this thing. But can it do? It's a million dollar question, right? I mean, you know, like the chap uh, Baradar, Mullah Baradar, he was, uh, you know, in a Pakistani jail for jail. eight years, yeah. right? So, and uh, there was no love loss between Pakistan and them. So, I can quote more examples. So, there is an issue right there. And then, of course, uh, what uh, General Duwar brought out is that Pashtun factor. Then, Pakistan itself is bankrupt. How can it fund Afghanistan? Mm. And then, the fallout in Pakistan. I mean, you know, we'll talk of Kashmir later, but there's a fallout in Pakistan. Radical Islam, right? TLP, we've seen it. So, Pakistan is not going to have an easy affair. And if you just compare earlier and now, earlier what was the case? There was no Pashtun homeland call or the PTM was not active, the TTP was not active, neither were the Baluch people active. So, they could, the, all these Talibs could go and, you know, do what they wanted in Afghanistan and Afghanistan itself was, uh, you know, wrecked with misery. And Pakistan was flush with punch. But today it's not so. It's exactly the opposite. Okay. They don't have a free run because on the Durand line they have problems. They might not be able to control Taliban. And they don't have funds themselves. And no one is going to support them. And every, the world sees Pakistan as, uh, you know, having aided Taliban. So there are question marks on this. And last point which I'd like to make is, you know, Organizations like Taliban and LTT have a habit of biting the hand which grew them. So this might repeat itself here. So uh, Taliban being fully controlled by Pakistan as General Dua brought out is a question mark. Interesting. So as a matter of fact, there was a couple of reports that uh, Shah Mahmood Qureshi was supposed to travel to Kabul to meet uh, the leadership of the Taliban, current leadership of the Taliban, if I may correct myself. And there was another report that came out within hours that said that Taliban has requested him not to come here at the moment. So that, you know, kind of shows you there is a bit of a challenge in terms of communication because if this is coming out in the wide open media, well, then there are certain issues which need to be dealt with among themselves as, as well. Jan Shankar, there are certain other, you know, card players on the, on the, on the table. Uh, you've got, it. <clears throat> excuse me, you've got Iran, you've got uh, Russia. And you've got, you've got the Chinese, you know, who are pretty much interested in everything that happens in this region. I'd like you to kind of spend a little time telling us about Iran, of course, with, because of the, you know, ideological and ethnic uh, issues that they've got over there in Afghanistan. The Russians who are being a moderator at the moment, but they've got their own issues. And the Chinese, well, anybody knows what their business is. So why don't you expand on what they are looking for, what they have reacted to the uh, the I would say the takeover of Talib, of Afghanistan by the Taliban. Uh, we'll first talk of China. You know, China, when the US forces went back, China was very happy, like Pakistan. They were over the moon. Everyone says, oh, you can't trust the uh, USA, etc., etc. And they've highlighted this defeat of China, uh, USA in a big way. And the expectation is that now that USA is out, this entire strategic space will be taken over by China. Right, and China will be the big game maker here. Okay. And they all, the general expectation and China's ambition 
is that you know they'll exploit the mineral wealth of afghanistan and also expand the belt uh, bri and the cpc across afghanistan i mean they have a parallel to uh, pakistan the one through the kunjrab bas and you know the traditional cpc to gwadar and now they can have another bri parallel through the wakan corridor afghanistan into iran and you know because they've also got a strategic partnership so there's a that's the expectation but when you i read two interesting articles in the south china morning post they worried they worried for two a few reasons one they are unsure of afghanistan of they are unsure of the islamic terror of afghanistan they are not fully convinced that whatever taliban says today will hold true tomorrow and if and they consider the etim with a terrorist group and if and their etim personnel have fought along with the taliban and if that spreads to xinjiang they have a problem that's the first problem they have right the second problem is that the reality is though china has invested in a copper mine in ainak in afghanistan it has not made much headway and this business entire business of minerals and rare earths and all that is nice to say but it's a pie in the sky as of today till afghanistan stabilizes nothing will happen and stabilization depends on that brother plus brother plus cousin what will how will they right so china is not a risk taker in geopolitics if you see it is not like usa that will enter a place it has never entered it historically so it is it is like you know in hindi mein bolte hain phoong phoong ke chalega and one thing china after this initial euphoria in the past two days this has come out now that usa is disengaged from afghanistan and it doesn't have to commit anything to afghanistan in terms of troops military resources and finances the worry in china is that they're going to support taiwan on the other hand china will have to contend with the enhanced threat in the western pacific or the yeah western pacific in front of taiwan and south china sea as also stretched towards afghanistan understand this so there is a play going on as much as china wants to enter so what is china doing they will outsource everything to pakistan and china is not one who's going to fund like uh usa is done important right now we'll switch from china to iran iran has a large border with uh, afghanistan the western border almost the entire western border of afghanistan is with uh, iran so you have ethnicities both sides and any problem in afghanistan will spill over there so they need to have they are making men and if there's a taliban control or a taliban majority uh, coalition which comes up either i mean still the both the options are open it could be a taliban ruled state or it could be a coalition state by some council to some internal arrangement in both cases iran has a problem also iran has a problem because of the Sh- shia sunni issues right but iran has got some leeway leverage also because if pakistan their relations with pakistan goes bad the other outlet for afghanistan is iran so and iran will look at trade also right and iran will also be interested in developing a one to one relationship with china through afghanistan it's mutual because if uh, it iran can't make headway with the usa beyond a point it has to swing towards china so that those are the iranian interests and fears so let's look at russia why is russia making this play all of a sudden what is russia's now russia wants to reemerge as a superpower but unfortunately it doesn't have direct stakes in afghanistan it's of its stake in afghanistan is second hand or third hand through the other stans that is uzbekistan tajikistan and kyrgyzstan right which have some borders with uh, afghanistan and russia also is worried about this islamic terrorism spreading through these islamic uh, earlier satellites into its uh, area 
And we shouldn't forget that Chechens have been part of Taliban, fighting with Taliban. Okay. We shouldn't also forget that it was ISI who motivated all these fellows to fight against Russia in the earlier avatar. So there are cross currents. Okay. Now, what are the platforms available? One is a new axis of Russia, China, Pakistan, Iran, you know, encapsulating Afghanistan. But the, again, is a pie in the sky. The other option is the Shanghai Corporation operation, uh, uh, SEO, Shanghai Corporation Organization, where China and Russia have uh, heavy, uh, heavy weights there. Through that, can they manipulate uh, Afghanistan to their benefit? But the problem there is India, because India is also a member there. And India might not, uh, you know. So there are, the mosaic is shifting. Right? Ultimately, like what General Doha said, we have to see what is in our interests. I mean, which I've been saying often, if Afghanistan was in Nicaragua or Guatemala, would we have re reacted the way we are reacting now? We have to see what our interests are. What are our interests? Our national interests lie around the fallout or the play between Pakistan and Afghanistan, maximum, like what General Doha said. And then China and Afghanistan as it affects us in Eastern Ladakh, if there's a fallout. Right. And that, I think, is the thing which we need to you now discuss. And the impact on Kashmir. Of course. And I think that you should direct the question to General Dua. Before I do, do that, sir, General Dua, would you like to add anything into the situation of Iran, Russia and China? Uh, you know, these uh, players, I think General Shankar has covered very well. I'll only add one small uh, issue of Turkey. Now, Turkey is another player which is a little bit on the outside. Again, not contiguous, but uh, no less important. And it has its own irons in the fire. It is also offered to run the airport and by that we get into it. So, Turkey is another player to watch. Like India also does not have uh, uh, contiguity with uh, the borders. But the fact is, similarly, Turkey is another player to, to watch. Interesting. I think, yeah, that is a very important uh, player that we need to look at. And uh, Erdogan always likes to have a word in these kind of, especially relating to Islamic State. So there is always a... And you know, Pakistan will be very elephant. comfortable with... Pakistan will be very comfortable with Turkey wrong. Yeah. yeah, true. So, but, the, you know, the, the issues of caliphate and the yeah, yeah, yeah. Islamic State. So, so we have to also watch that uh, growing with this, you know, with all these countries uh, looking at that kind of a, a dispensation. We, we need to keep our finger on the pulse. Coming to you, General Duwazar, about the main subject that I think all of India is concerned about. Being a former Corps Commander of the 15 Corps based in Srinagar, what do you see? Because, you know, happening in Kashmir, we all know the history of what happened after the Soviets left Afghanistan the last time around that the Taliban was in power. The Pakistanis were able to actually successfully push them across into our territory. We weren't, we were caught, caught off guard. There was a lot of chaos that took place, which is... Uh, lasted out on, almost uh, till date, which is now coming into control. So, how do you see this situation uh, in terms of manpower and in terms of weapons, which is another major concern in Kashmir? Uh, this is a very uh, live concern and this is something that is really going to concern us uh, uh, very directly. So, uh, in, in early 90s, when we saw the spillovers of this effect, uh, coming into Kashmir, uh, Indian Army had just started to grapple with this issue of uh, terrorism in Kashmir. Uh, the infiltration across the LOC. The Indian Army uh, was deployed in a different mode. Not only the Indian Army, it was. Uh, it is also that at that moment, India by, as a country was uh, dealing with many challenges. On the political front, we had a very weak coalition government. On the economic front, you know that in 1991, how how weakly uh, how weak was Indian economy, and it's only the reforms after that were set into motion after that after 91 that propelled us to growth. Uh, in uh, military terms, uh, we uh, you know we we were uh, we had just been invested in Sri Lanka. We have uh, uh, our army deployment in. Kashmir uh, were in JNK, sorry, were, were only to guard against, guard the LOCs. So, uh, from then to now, 
there is a lot of difference purely in uh, military and security terms we have raised a counter terrorism force called rashtriya rifle 63 battalions we have so so much more army deployed uh, in whole of jnk both in counter infiltration grid as well as in counter terrorism grid we have of lc fence uh, <coughs> with all uh, sensors and platforms interwoven into it we have drones we have so many other enablers uh, that look into the loc i'm talking about the physical aspect of guarding against infiltration and we have been very effective over the years and and more important we have a lot of combat experience in this field okay so that is it so today if any of that spillover is uh, redirected by isi by pakistan towards the loc it is going to be a very different ball game secondly today on the other side in the last two years after dilution of article 370 the security forces have got the situation much under control the aspirations of people are very slowly a bit slowly but steadily being met by a direct rule from the center uh, i'll not expand the discussion there but what i'm trying to say that the situation in the valley is also looking very prom- looking promising though there there is some sentiment um, uh, to the other side uh, and the political aspirations uh, are still to be met with that dynamic we cannot uh, uh, let situation uh, worsen because of this the other aspect that i want to mention here what cannot uh, what what needs to be watched is that as it bound to happen it is bound to happen that whenever let's say uh, like taliban has swept into uh, uh, controlling uh, the situation in uh, afghanistan it will start calling the shots it is calling the shots as of now this does embolden uh, all such terror groups mm. is bound to embolden groups into thinking that uh, you know, this if they can do it so can we it is bound to uh, in uh, you know some of the youth might actually get motivated to uh, get into this mode so that is, that is something that our intelligence agencies our security forces need to keep uh, an ear to the ground and make and ensure that we don't get into that sort of a mode the only other uh, aspect um, that remains from the point of view of security in kashmir is uh, the the aspect of so i have spoken about the security and i have spoken about the sentiment the other aspect uh, general shankar did mention uh, earlier is uh, is this link on top with the wakhan corridor we say wakhan corridor where it is also touching china it is also uh, the the tongue of uh, sort of uh, afghanistan that is coming out it's a, it's a very narrow strip of land uh, between the uh, Uh, the uh, the uh, the karakoram and uh, the uh, uh, the around the pamir yeah the pamir that side so uh, uh, this this is the connect between china this is the connect with gilgit baltistan so one would say as to gilgit baltistan is now uh, that that throws up gilgit baltistan into question uh, gilgit baltistan is uh, is disputed territory so that dynamic is something that we must remember that we have to we have that kind of a leverage and linkage to keep that issue uh, alive and that's another aspect of jnk i'd like to mention uh, janal shankar yeah i think w- what uh, janal doa said is fantastic actually actually he said the core and i've been saying this earlier and in fact one of our earlier discussions so so we said in between afghanistan china pakistan and india the center of gravity lies in gilgit baltistan geographically also you have to make china look inward you have to make china look inward you have to you know do something on gilgit baltistan start a political process i'm not saying you know military process that's not that just start a political process the moment you start the political process pakistan uh, get the message the second thing which i'd like to say is you know this move of all these fellows and repurposed into uh, uh, jnk is not going to happen overnight first and foremost unless the taliban and that resistance force which is coming up are fully in power and they have come to a stage where they you know all these fellows are useless to them they will not let go because taliban's military power 
is the one which will hold them in political power you know that's the main pillar if they start leaving the uh, their fighters off okay they'll themselves collapse anyone both sides so till such time there is some stability in afghanistan none of these chaps will start coming but will it stop some of them being repurposed by pakistan to keep india on the back foot possible right we like he said our intelligence is better or across the border reach is better across the loc reach is better on many accounts the first indication of we get of foreign terrorists coming into this area we need to go a little proactive and what are the proactive we have done fire assaults we have done uh, so many things we have also done cross loc you know uh, raids we have done uh, surgical strikes all the whole option opens up and then keep a, then keep pakistan focused on the other borders their cpc is vulnerable after all, pakistan is economically back down and make a hue and cry of it keep them on the fatf blacklist for some more time and you know one great advantage we have now vis a vis earlier earlier the world wanted pakistan to control afghanistan today it might not be so they might not be so happy you know they might not be so forgiving with pakistan if they start this right and the willingness of the world to listen to our point of view will be much higher so we need to think but then the fundamental the fundamental of fundamental which general uh, uh, satish dua mentioned we need to hold our internal issues in kashmir well the political process everything then everything will be okay and we are a stronger government we are a stronger politic and we are a stronger nation i think uh, one of the biggest takeaways if i combine what both of you said you know the taliban would not have a focused uh, effort towards pushing people into kashmir but having said that there will be a one or two free elements that pakistan would be able to actually push across See, into kashmir taliban no no wait let me clarify this taliban will not be interested in pushing people across into kashmir true true yeah, right it is pakistan pakistan okay it is pakistan and also remember the taliban what uh, general dua said earlier might not put all their eggs in the pakistani basket mm. at some stage they'll start opening it out to the indians to counterbalance pakistan yeah. they will do it it's a matter of and already usa if pakistan if taliban wants funds they'll have to come back to usa and india at some point of time so it is not as if everything is lost as people are being made investing it it's not so easy to stick okay so it, but what we need to do is keep a uh, thing on uh, pakistan absolutely i absolutely agree with you and that's what uh, i was trying to say that pakistan may be able to get some free elements over into this way and that is exactly i think what the chinese are also worried about in xinjiang one of these free elements here and there getting into that area and creating trouble of course that's a yeah, on a lighter note and... you know on a very lighter note it won't be a bad idea of you know you some of these chaps come across the loc you buy them off and send them across <laughs> into china yeah so <laughs> as it is for higher so that might be the che- longer a cheaper option in the long run absolutely and of course as general do also brought out you know our our anti infiltration grid and of course the experience that the indian army has in countering yeah. these guys is going to be a large this thing plus of course our control we've got a very very tight control on the escalatory ladder with regards to retaliation which wasn't the case before um you know it's that that's going to make a big difference general shankar for my last question sir you know and we've discussed this before about and i fear this more and more since the taliban has now been cut off from their funds narco uh, narcotics and the trade and the terrorism connected to that should would become a very very big problem for india in the coming uh, sometime how do you see the situation sir see the fact is that narcotics or uh, poppy cultivation in afghanistan will continue over the past 20 years it has grown tenfold because without poppy cultivation the poverty levels in afghanistan will go very low and the the narco funding was the one which brought taliban to power after all one of their main sources of income was but then that was illegal 
Now you can't run a legal government on an illegal trade. So that's a dichotomy. But having said that, the narco issue is live. If Pakistan doesn't get funds, Pakistan might get into this narco trade. At one point of time, Pakistan's economy was a narco economy in the earlier in the early uh, late 90s, right? So that issue is live. We have seen the drug problem in Punjab. Drugs might flow over into our area. So, you know, that is something which I think we have to take uh, uh, very serious steps. And we have to take counter steps from now. The faster we do it, the better. Uh, yes, Satish, your views. Please, sir. Yes. No, uh, no sir. You, you covered it all. Like the operative sentence being, it is okay for people to get involved in drugs. Governments can't. Governments can't be run uh, run on uh, on uh, on narco. That is, I think, one of the key lines of uh, you know this discussion is because it's it's a very fluid situation and whatever said and done, the Taliban is being pushed into a corner. Apart from the fact that they now somewhat control a country, not um, you know legally as one put it across, but yeah, they've got the control over the country, but they need the money and uh, they need the money to keep their uh, you know. Terrorist soldiers, whatever they call them, fighting. There is there is a there is a diff there is a difference, Adi, between controlling and being able to administer. Yes, yes. So if if they have to let it not slip into a civil war, they will soon start. They will soon have to administer it, and you require very different resources, very different wherewithal, and intent for administering than for just coming in control. See the thing. Which I'd just like to add an issue of what General Dua said. See, Afghanistan has changed in the past 25, 30 years since the last round. The Taliban itself has changed. They used to five star restaurants yeah. and you know hotels and all that. People have changed. The aspirations of the Afghans have changed. You see women now coming uh, raising their voice. Media has changed. Today there's vibrant media in Afghanistan also. Taliban succeeded because of their media policy, yes. of slick media. So it's a different dynamic, you know. That is something which we can't uh, this thing. So it's not going to be so easy to rule by a gun anymore. Uh, now that we've started talking about it, so let me also just make a couple Please. of points. Uh, uh, there are two other things that come to my mind that now we're talking about the internal situation as uh, it is uh, developing in, in Afghanistan uh, with relation to Taliban coming into power. Uh, like Yana Shankar said, there is a divide in Afghanistan, uh, uh, within Taliban. There is the elite which lives in hotels, goes to Doha, Qatar, and I mean, do, uh, does all those talks and everything. And there is a field commander who is still living a life of hardship, who lives by his gun in the field. Uh, that is one aspect. The second aspect is... <coughs> They are used to contending with or opposing somebody with an AK rifle. The soldiers, the troops, the other whether it's uh, from another country or their own, they are not used to. Uh, they don't know how to handle crowds. For example, this this two hundred feet long flag and people walking peacefully, uh, protesting against the Taliban. They they really don't know how to handle it because they don't start firing at them. Then the other aspect is that. There are 300, uh, 350,000 odd Afghan soldiers. After all, they are trained soldiers. They are there. They are somewhere there. The uh, Defense and Security Forces. So, you don't leave trained soldiers just like that. Now, that's another worry that they'll have to do something about them. They have to get them on board. Women, they are, they are talking to, uh, uh, despite their making some statements, uh, women are coming out. There have been some stray cases of um, uh, atrocities being committed. So what I'm trying to say, these are the these are new kind of experiences for these people who have now swept into power. How to manage that dynamic and not come out painted with a black brush 
is going to be another challenge for them. On so we've discussed this. Um, let's not re- don't want to repeat ourselves, but the fact is that there are so many challenges domestically uh, as well as uh, diplomatically that remain to be seen. So we also should not be in a hurry to make any uh, make up our minds. I would say no, no one's making taking any decisions, but we should not be in a hurry. Let the dust settle, and we will see how things uh, develop. If I put it in one sentence, you know, one sentence, Taliban has won the war. Will it win the peace? <laughs> That's going yeah. to be a big question. So they took Pakistan's help in order to establish control, which the Pakistanis pretty much know how to do uh, in terms of their area, their own area in Balochistan and so on and so forth, which still have issues. But fair enough, they've got a solid control over that place. Ruling, for that matter, I don't think the Taliban will look at Pakistan because if you look at their own country, what they they've been able to do there, I don't think the Pakistan the Taliban is that uh, immature to actually look at a country which is failing itself. And I think one of the biggest points that has been brought out is this Taliban is not the one that used to live in cages. These guys are wearing t sort watches. They have got Gucci robes and you know so on and so forth. Used to the air conditioning in five star hotels. They're not the one who's going to go down onto the ground and start, you know, doing, uh, you know, what what used to happen. At least that's the reading which is coming out at the moment. Thank you both, sir, for bringing about, I think, a very, very cohesive discussion as to what is happening on the ground. Uh, we've not really dwelled into the nuances of how the Taliban took over and this and that, because that all is still under speculation. A lot of people have brought out certain things, but uh, that all is still under speculation. Biggest factor that has come out is the Taliban are in control. How far will they be able to actually form a government and administer is a big question. As somebody had actually said, you can uh, control or rule by the gun, but you can't administer by the gun or you can't govern by the gun. So that's going to become a big question for them to see. Uh, The neighbors, which is the most important part, I think uh, one of the things that all these Taliban and everybody would want is for them to be left alone for a little bit. But that's not going to happen. Each one of the neighbors is going to exact their pound of flesh from uh, the Taliban for whatever help or whatever consequences they've had to bear because of this entire issue that is taking place. Iran, Russia, China, Turkey, India, and of course, the biggest player of them all, the United States. And the underlining statement is that the U.S. military has pulled out. But of course, the U.S. influence is still there which is something that we can see with the U.S. freezing up their assets. So it is an evolving situation, speculation on how this entire thing would go forward into the future. Of course, is we've done some of it, but internally what the Taliban have to do is going to be up for grabs. Thank you, sir. Thank you, General Shankar, General Dua, for bringing out some very, very important points. Until next time, sir. Jai Hind. Thank Jai you. Hind. Thank you. Jai Hind.